Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay. Up to you. Morning, everybody. Still morning. I'm very pleased to be here today. Um, we are going to present you uh, a very innovative and interesting project. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> Go on the next. A uh, very interesting and innovative project. Uh, um, we, as Neodata and uh, Mediaset, have been developing this year. Um, together with Paolo, who is general manager uh, at Tech and Business Development in Publitalia, we'll drive you through um, a, a list of achievements on business and technology that we have got. Uh, just two words about Neodata. We are a tech company based in Italy. Um, we have a regional office in Spain and in Germany, and we work with customers across all Europe. We work with data, and uh, our goal is to extract knowledge from data, create profile, and in, in the broadcasting, help you to address the right message to the right audience. Um, I will let, now let Paola give you uh, uh, all the history of the project and give you the detail of what we've got. So I, I'll start briefly from, from our vision, which our CEO shared with you this morning. So we are a broadcaster, and what we want to continue doing in this new enhanced world is to connect with people. And we want to do that on any time, anywhere, and on any device, both with content, which is what we are very good at doing, but also uh, with advertising. Uh, and with advertising, you know, we have done it historically on digital, in a brief history, of course. Uh, we've done it on digital. We have done it on our pay TV. We have done it with set-top boxes, which was, in a way, not easy, but easier. Uh, but now the big thing is to be able to do that with our core business, which is linear uh, and which is free uh, TV. Uh, because that, you saw the stats today, so in Italy, is, is a core uh, media for consumers, it still reaches 75% plus of the population, um, and so that's where the big audiences are. Uh, so we have uh, started last year, uh, we decided to hit the ground running, and we launched two products, uh, which we called uh, Ad Plus. Uh, we branded Ad Plus. Um, so this is the first one. You saw the example of golf, uh, which kindly uh, Volkswagen shared with you this morning. So the first one is called Adover, and it's an interaction that is offered on a TV spot. So you have your TV campaign planned during the spot on connected TVs, you will get this interaction button. And this can be regionalized as well. The second one is called Ad Inside. Inside because it goes inside the content. So while you're watching a TV program, the screen resizes re uh, on the top corner and you get this L-shaped creative, which stays for 12, 13 seconds, uh, with whom you can interact. So again, you press the OK button and you land to a microsite. Uh, this site, as it was mentioned, is create, it sits in the TV CMS, so it's a TV. Um, microsite, and that is because uh, TV, connected TV capabilities are still quite limited when it comes to navigating and surfing. And so this um, allows the user to remain in the TV environment and get a good interaction, a good user experience. Uh, in the microsite, uh, advertisers can add all information about their products, uh, video, they can really tell a story and engage with the consumer. Um, so this is where uh, we started, but we're already looking forward to the next step. Of course, the next uh, creative type is going to be video. With the workup for which we, we had rights, we take the occasion to launch an HBB TV um, application, which will also be done on our previous standard, MHP, to allow a larger reach of users. And on this TV uh, application, you'll be able to uh, watch highlights, restart a football match that you've missed the beginning of, or uh, look for a match that happened yesterday and that you, you really want to see today, so your VOD uh, offering. Um, this is, for us, it's a new step. It, we are really reshaping the interaction of the consumer, the user experience, uh, also for uh, free TV, which was a big uh, opportunity and also the big, big challenge uh, in development for us. Yes, so the project that Paola described, the product that she described, really 
aim at redesigning the interaction between broadcasting and the audience. Um, we have been involved in four areas, uh, and to solve these four areas, we really push at the, at the limit our technology. Uh, as we said before, we, nobody has the perfect solution. So you have to push as much as you can to get the results. The four areas um, where we have been involved are the real-time tracking of the audience. That is very new in this field. Knowing in real time um, how many people are connected on each of your channels. Then, obviously, our, our goal is also to profile the audience, to profile the devices, to know who is watching what in real time and to create attractive profiles for the advertising market. Then uh, the delivery, so the addressable, addressable TV, so the delivery on the TV screen of the message to the right audience. And last but not the least, um, our audience and interaction measurement um, allow us to, to create new KPIs really new KPIs for the TV, TV uh, interaction um, that make this project really unique. So going one step on the first goal, the tracking of the audience. We used our technology. I, I think you have a flyer also on your chair about it. It's, uh, we have a platform that is named Exaudi. Okay? It is a DMP and somehow a data lake solution. Um, it covers all the data monetization cycle from the data in ingestion. Here we are talking about real-time data coming into the platform, um, to the profiling, to the analysis, and to the data activation. Uh, when we talk about tracking um, in real time from TV, we have some um, issue or some challenge to solve. The first one is privacy. You have to inform your audience that you are tracking data <coughs> and that you are using this data for profiling purpose. So your, the audience must give you a consent. So you have to develop somehow an application that is delivered on the TV, on a smart TV, uh, that is capable to deal with the user, get the consent, store it, and use it in the right way. Then another key point to solve is to find a way to identify uniquely each single device. It's not easy. It's not as it's happening on the, on, the, on the desktop, where you can use a cookie, hmm? or where you can use something more sophisticated. It's not what's happening on the um, mobile device, where you have some ID that is done just for this. Here, again, you have to find a way um, to deal with the application and to help this application talking with a backend solution that provides unique ID a set of unique ID that help you to identify a long time, over the time, a single device. So once you have done this, it's time to tracking. Uh, tracking means um, recording every action that the user is doing with your channel, in your channels. So every single channel changes, uh, every time the user is switching on, switching off the TV. So you have to find a way um, to understand what's happening, to remove noise. It's not interesting to know if a user is doing zap continuously between your channel. It's maybe interesting to know if the user is staying on the channel and how long is going to stay on the channel. You have to do this in real time if you want to have information in real time. And last, you may want to have all this information available on a dashboard. Um, where you have few numbers that help you, to, uh, to help you to understand the business, help you to understand what's happening. It's not so easy. It's really a multidisciplinary project. It involves technology. It involves uh, user experience. It involves data scientists. Um, frankly, it would have not been possible without uh, the participation and the collaboration that we have done with MediaSense since the very first day of this project. We have done requirements together. We have done implementation side by side. We have done testing together. Really, um, it's, it's a message that I want to, to, to say to you. Don't think that you will go on the market and you will find a solution that is ready for doing that. You have to work together, uh, broadcaster and technology.
This is an example of a first result. So the audience tracking in real time. It is a picture of, um, uh, of the dashboard that we have developed and provided with new data. It's a piece of the dashboard. It provides in real time some information that is quite useful. In the top part of the chart, we have some key indicators. We have the number of um, total device that is connected in this very moment. So here we have 170,000 devices connected. Okay? We have, and we know uh, every second, how many of them gives you a consent for profiling and tracking and how many didn't. So we know how many can be addressed with a, 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 an addressable message, with a, a profiled message. We know how many here we have 2.8 million devices. How many devices has been profiled in the last, in this case, 90 days? So we can set any type of information. And we know how many of them has a specific profile. In the bottom part of the chart, we have trend lines of the channels. Uh, this data refresh every five seconds. So it's really on, on real time. Uh, and each line is, is uh, a channel. Um, for instance, here in green, we have Canale Cinque, that is one of the major uh, channels of Mediaset Bouquet. And in, in yellow, we have Italia Uno. Uh, it may be interesting to know that a certain, in a certain moment of time, this day, the audience was moving from one channel to the other. We have this information in real time. We can fire an, a message, an alert to media saying, hey, guys, people is moving from one channel to the other. People is leaving your channel. People is coming in your channel. Uh, this is the type of analysis and the type of instruments that we can build with a real time tracking. And, and so this has become like a, a, an internal product for us. So we have it for pay TV and set up box. But now we have it also for uh, for HBB TV, so it allows us really to see in real time what's going on with with our audience. And I see uh, our your head of um, branded content, and I'm thinking that last week, uh, you know, we checked immediately how a branded content piece went comparing to the previous week. So we add the data, and we know uh, how our you know the, the TV uh, programs are doing uh, anytime. So it really changes the dynamics. It, it makes it everything. Uh, you know, on the spot and dynamic. Um, and th this data is, is also very rich for, for two reasons, because we keep increasing the number of devices that we are covering with our application, which means with our formats, but also with the measurement. So here you see the line, the growth, since we started in July, so we allowed a white list of devices, because so one thing we did, we developed um, our application for advertising and data tracking, not only for HBB TV, it, that is, you know, from 2017 is the future of TV devices in Italy, but we, we wanted to have a critical mass. So we developed also on the oldest standard in Italy, which was MHP. Uh, and because it was an old standard, it was not a standard anymore. So many manufacturers were tweaking it. So what we found out that we were rolling out devices and one by one, you know, model by model, manufacturer by manufacturer, we had to test them all, make sure they were, you know, providing good quality experience for the consumer, and then we would whitelist them and release the application. So this is the process where you see the steep line up to, to October and November. And then after November, we released the application for HBB TV, uh, which is more flexible, has, is more powerful also uh, in terms of capabilities uh, for us. What you can see, though, is, is an incredible growth in the product and a reach of 2.8 million devices in Italy. Uh, so if you consider that we have 24 million households, uh, it's already significant a significant reach, and it's a growing uh, reach, most importantly. So we have the opportunity to start testing, start learning with our advertisers while the market is, is picking up. Um, another key number for us is the 90% of consent. So users have to opt in. Uh, so we ask them and we explain what we want to do with their data, and they are free to opt in or to opt out. And 90% of them have opted in, which for me is like a sign of the trust that consumers have with, with TV and with broadcasters. Yeah. So 
uh, go, going further on, on this type of the project, uh, once we track the audience, then we maybe want to profile the audience and to understand who is watching what, how we do that. Um, so imagine we track each single device, um, every content is watching, uh, we collect data and we try to analyze it. For, so for instance, we may have one device, as you may imagine, that maybe is switched on usually in the morning watching TV content for kids, cartoon, then it's switched off all the day uh, and then switch it on again back on the prime time watching, I don't know, uh, movies or sports. We are probably in front of a family, an household composed by parents and kids. Uh, on the other side we may have another and completely different um, behavior of the device. The device switch on a bit later in the morning, stay on all the day and then watching Mm, series, TV series or news, it's a completely different user and household. So uh, probably uh, if you want to address, we, we are talking a lot of cars today, so if we, I, I do an example with cars, if you want to address um, and advertise a message uh, for a car producer who has a new car with uh, special equipment uh, for kid safety, you will probably choose the first type of audience and you will probably want to talk in the evening when the parents are watching the TV. So this is what we are doing. We are not doing it one by one, hand by hand, no, by ourselves. We have trained um, our technology using machine learning to understand who is watching what at this moment. So we know um, exactly uh, the characteristics of the household, we try to predict and to understand the characteristics of the household and we give this data to Mediaset to create the segment that they want to address for the, for the advertiser. Uh, so the, the go-to-market for, for this for us is, is to split the data into pockets. So the first one is the device data, um, because the device in itself is already providing a wealth of information. So we know uh, where the device is located, so we have geolocation information, we know the connection speed, uh, we know the brand and the, uh, the model of, of the TV set, you know, and there are very, very expensive ones, so you can start profiling uh, audience based on that as well. And then we have user uh, consumer data. So we can gather from the information that Matteo was talking about, we can infer the profile of the family based on the content they watch uh, and the t kind of you know, pattern of consumption during the day. So uh, literally we have uh, technical data and we have consumer uh, people's data, if you want, that we merge together uh, to find the right sp sweet spots for, uh, for our advertisers. Again, sorry. So we've been <laughs> speaking at length of these, but Volkswagen was an example where we used geolocation data to deliver uh, this method model specifically to the region where this was relevant, so where you can actually fi find uh, methane fuel stations. Uh, so same content, same moment in time, users in different uh, areas of Italy would see uh, different creatives addressing to different uh, car models. Another example that we have done recently is mixing uh, two types of, of targeting is for Linkem. Linkem is a broadband provider. So we divided our, we, we targeted the campaign in three different ways. So we do it geographically because they can cover currently just a few cities in Italy. Uh, but also we did it by connection rate. Uh, so we targeted households with a low uh, connection speed because you know, offering a broadband an announcement of their user experience. And a, a nice, uh, nice experiment that we have done, so the advertisers have done, they've run the campaign in Rome promoting tickets uh, for the foot, football match. So you know, you find out more, you might win tickets to watch uh, Roma Juventus. And you know, that creative have like three times plus <laughs> the interaction rate than, than all the others in the campaign. So they really managed um, you know, a very smart way of addressing the right message to the right audience, uh, you know, really triggering that extra interest uh, in them. Okay, so addressable TV with this scary picture. We just want to, to, to give <laughs> scare it. Scare you. <laughs> huh? Scare you to death. <laughs> yeah. 
We just going, want to give you an overview of what's happening. So if you can just click one. Uh, what we are doing, we are tracking the devices. So we are talking about TV, connected TV, obviously. Uh, we have used our technology um, to track this data in real time. As we said, we are profiling. What profiling means? It means having information in real time on dashboard. You need this. It means having reports to deep dive on data and to understand what's happening. Um, we have developed together a set of reports that help media set to understand what's happening, to understand uh, what can be going better and how to tune the services. We have configured a module of our platform that is uh, named, we, we call it clustering interface, um, where the media set user can compose a segment, um, can compose the segment using the characteristic that we have seen before, so they can choose characteristic of the audience and knowing at the, at the moment where they are doing, how many people are they going to address? It's, it's, it's very important to know how big is the audience. Okay, then once the segment is created, we give the segment to the delivery platform to deliver the right message. Again, in this case, the delivery platform is our technology, is our ad server named uh, Adagio. Um, that we have connected to receive the audience and to deliver the message uh, to the right audience on the TV screen. But um, just think a little about the product that Paola has described. We have, for instance, the Adover is a message, as, as you can see in the screen over there. We have the Swiffer in this case, Swiffer. Uh, commercial on the TV, it's maybe 15 seconds or maybe 30 seconds. And you want to give to some people, some device, uh, an additional message that you provide uh, using the digital channel, the green square you have over there in this example. Uh, the commercial is about 30 seconds. You want to have the message uh, two seconds after the commercial starts. Uh, so it means that you have maybe 100,000 or maybe a million of devices that is requesting to the ad server simultaneously to deliver this message. This is dramatically different of what's happening on the web. On the web, you have, we are used to work on the web, obviously. On the web, you have smooth and continuous request to the technology. Here we have a huge spike and a tremendous spike of requests at the very same time to deliver the message. So it has been really a challenge <laughs> to solve this, uh, a very interesting channel for tech people like me uh, to solve. We succeed. Uh, we now are delivering, uh, as we said, messages in real time, understanding who is watching the TV, um, the profile of the user um, and give him the message to the right audience. Okay, so all this innovation obviously has required it to work on new KPIs, new KPIs for the TV uh, world. Uh, here, new, t new KPIs that help a media set to uh, provide the services to the, to the, to the investors or the, to the advertiser. Here we have some example, then Paola will give you a real example of the uh, reports that we have created. Uh, the, in the central one, the first reports, uh, every dot, every color, sorry, every color represent a brand. So here we have multiple brand view. Uh, you may imagine red is a brand one and yellow is another one and it's another brand. Um, every dot is a message, is, uh, you may think it's a campaign or a specific creativity. And the position of the dot in the chart means the, perform the performance of the message. The performance in the QPI is calculated using a number of indicators uh, that we, we have been working on. So uh, while you are delivering a campaign, 
uh, you can understand. You have the information of how it's going uh, relating to the performance. Performance is about, about the time the user is interacting with your messages, the number of interactions the user are doing, the audience that you are collecting, and so on. Um, this is just a, a start of what you can do on a KPI, as we have seen before in, the, in some presentation. We still need to provide the new KPIs on, on, on the TV. We are just at the start. Yeah, so as, as Jakob mentioned, it's like it's a new world we're living in. So even the KPIs are all new for TV. So when we, we, we started and with work with, with Neodata, we had this data lake. So we have this huge database, like fantastic for every geek <laughs> and uh, like, like me. But we had to, to understand what's really valuable to take out yeah. for us, for the advertiser. And there's also like a new element to, to it because this type of advertising is dynamic. So a campaign might start in a way and you can change it throughout uh, his lifetime to change according to the goal that the advertiser has. So, and this is, uh, this is an example of reports that we identified we needed. So we looked, uh, so here you, you, you see uh, on the uh, Y axis, you see we have the number of views on the x-axis, you have the number of uh, visits compared to uh, views. What you would call in digital click rate, it's different, so we, we'll, I'll go to that in a minute. Um, but basically what we saw, so this is the creative for another Volkswagen car, and I swear we had many more clients. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that you feel right to honor Volkswagen today uh, because they've been so nice to, to come and speak. But um, So here you see Volkswagen, and these are different uh, performance points according to the time. For example, this is Italia Uno, one of our channels, and the uh, point in time is at hour 22. And this is the creative. So you can see this creative with this call to action had that performance. So you can see it's falling to the, uh, all of the left. Same time point, same channel. So Italia 1 or 22, Golf, is more than five times the interaction rate. And you see the difference is where the call to action was put. So we are also learning these things and we share it back to the advertiser and we say, look, we found out you know, that, that your campaign interaction rate is not quite as high as it could be. Uh, and we have a creative team that's been amazing in following us and uh, you know, providing suggestions so we switch the creative, we do little changes and the performance is, is dramatically different in the end. And so we realize, okay, so that's a report we, we absolutely need to have and this goes in the dashboard. And uh, now we're looking at you know, coverage over time, frequency capping. So it's literally, we are discovering it. So uh, at the moment, the KPIs that we, we are providing to the market, we have decided to provide to the market are these. So one is views, so the number of times the creative has appeared on a TV screen. When you know, we, we take it to clients, they ask, oh, so this is impression. Not quite, because you have, most of the time, you have more than one person in front of a TV screen, so it's a bit more than an impression. Uh, visits, again, okay, so this is click. Not exactly, so visits is the number of people are actually entering the microsite, so we, we measure it from the, from the site itself. So it's more similar to the visits of a uh, website, and the difference is that clicks, for example, you have a drop-off, um, so normally, only 70%, of, if you're lucky, of the clicks actually get to a website because of several reasons, connections dropping or you know, mistakenly clicking on a device. And what surprised me is that, again, normally when you're watching TV, you're leaned back. So you're relaxing. You, you don't necessarily have your remote in your hand. But we're, our average interaction rate is between two and three people every thousand. So 0 0.02, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.3% of interaction, which is quite high if you have to think that you have to find your remote, which you know, in my household is like an impossible task. You have to find it and interact. Uh, and you have a limited time frame to do so. So it's either the TV spot or it's 12 seconds when you see the ad. So there's a lot of interest from the user. What we measure then in the site is like how many actions. So as, as a user enters a site, as he interacts, as he opens a window, uh, as he uh, scrolled, uh, you cannot scroll, but you can switch, 
uh, swipe, sorry, the different um, pictures to watch or uh, started a video. And the other KPI that we are providing at the moment is the time spent. So how much, and we track sort of engagement, so how much users are spending in this microsite interacting with the brand. So this is the set that we have decided to start with. There are actually many, many more variables that we have in there, but because it's you know, such a new media and we want to you know, provide a KPI, understand how it works, how we can influence it, and see if it actually is valuable, it is meaningful to, uh, to the market. Uh, so it's definitely uh, a continuous and ongoing process of development, discovery, and you know, speaking co con constantly to, to the market uh, to, to understand what, you know, where we are going with, with this. Yes. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Paola. Thank you, Matteo, thank for you. a very interesting presentation. We have time for some questions. Are there any takers in the audience? question regarding HBB TV and the implementation of that. Uh, what, what are your experiences when it comes to the telcos and maybe also the set-top boxes uh, filtering of the information carrying uh, the HBB signal? We, we, I don't have much experience with it, but I'm curious to know if if you have had to work with like the telcos to, to make sure they don't filter out that part uh, carrying the signal. Um, for the HPB TV. Is that something you have experienced um, or does it simply work in um, Italy? As, as far as today it works. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's true. It's, true. it's uh, really new also in Italy. HPB TV is not uh, uh, really broad used, it's, it's starting. Um, as far as today it's working, um, mind that we are um, in enabling uh, devices by devices, so we test uh, on each device. So uh, it's not easy, but uh, as far as today, yeah, works. So it's, pr it's pretty smooth to, to get the signal through to the devices, at least in, in Italy today. Right? Yeah, no. you are thinking about the, I guess the the, the broadcast um, yeah, exactly. events. Yeah, I'm just curious to see if so, if someone is is, is uh, putting problems in your way by uh, like filtering out that information or having demand uh, mm, no. on how to how to handle that. But, as okay. far as I know, no. Thanks. Welcome. Got one question here at the front. Hello, uh, my name is Frank Cassidy. I just wanted to ask um, ask you whether the application of all of this new data that you now have is um, is purely for the commercial and the advertising side, or have you started to use it to change programming strategy <laughs> or um, series or, or, or a, you know different type of um, uh, decision making in the organisation? So actually, our broadcaster is is working a lot in that direction. So they're looking, so they have built a BI unit to see, you know, what, who is watching series and, you know, content, what kind of profiles users have. So that's in depth and it's helping their decisioning when they're, you know, programming and thinking of new shows. Uh, and then they are working on integrating all the data also in a recommendation system. A further step that I briefly show of, of the release of our new platform, uh, which will happen in May, um, is that we are going to have um, a service strategy uh, aligned with a data strategy. So we're going to have a registration process where users can register and that, therefore you gather information of user behavior also in terms of what they watch and provide a recommendation based on that on the first screen as well. Any other questions? Um, I'm, I have a question regarding the addressability of the, of the households. Mr. Tulane described um, about members of the households getting individual accounts. So I didn't quite get whether you have it already or is it in the planning. And if it is already available, I'm very curious what's the trigger for the users to register uh, via the platform. And I also have a question, so how do you track and how do you uh, stimulate users to log in with their personal accounts? Uh, because I'm, I'm thinking of a usability issue calling, uh, meaning like uh, 
typing my password in the interface with the Ruby remote? Uh, okay, so cool yeah, so we uh, so we re, as I said, we are again re redesigning uh, everything because we tested on online on registration, um, and actually we find there were some room for improvement. So we are completely rethinking it, and we are starting an easy way because you know user interaction is everything; it makes it successful or not immediately. Uh, and so we're thinking of a smart and quick way where second screen and first screen can work together for an easier registration. Yeah, maybe just add something. On the technical side, what you were talking, if we have or we are planning to have a profiling of the household, um, absolutely we have. Um, then, uh, we, obviously, uh, we have not the glass, no, you know, the, um, it's, um, we use machine learning to understand who is watching at this moment. We try to understand how it's composed the household, uh, then Mediaset is deciding to give at the market um, product um, time by time. So uh, I think that this is a decision to push this kind of usage at the market when the market is ready to get it. Hmm? So on a technology point of view, uh, we can do it. We have it, it's available, and it's, yeah, we are we, doing it. It's available for targeting. To be fair, I don't think we haven't ever had any requests yeah. for a specific sort of household composition targeting. It is out there. We, we haven't had, we had the, uh, more, the demand was more about geographical targeting, connection targeting. We had luxury clients, so we isolated top, uh, you know, top 2% devices in terms of cost. Uh, to provide some targeting to them, but that question hasn't uh, hasn't come. That demand from the advertiser hasn't come out specifically. What is the adoption rate of, of this person, personal lifestyle? So how? So I mean, if 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 I'm a household one on the HGTV network, and I I'm logging in with my master account of the father, so when the sound logs in, so what's the adoption rate of sounds logging in to the father account? No, um, so at the moment, so the, the household profiling is not made on a registration basis. So the registration is not available yet. It's inferred based on the consumption habit on, the, on the TV screen. Yeah. Maybe one final question. Quick one, what's the average time spent on these microsites? Because Volkswagen was saying 43 seconds and they seem super happy about this, which, you know, I, I was surprised uh, there was not even a minute. What's the average and what's, what would be a good range? It, it ranges. It ranges from 30 seconds to up to more than a minute. It, de it depends a lot on the content. So some advertisers load video. Uh, we had campaigns when you had a gamification, so you have to watch for things in the video. And so, you know, that's a long time. Uh, some advertiser haven't had that much information, so of course the user is reading that what's in the page and then they're leaving. Okay, thank you very much, Paula. Thank you. Paul,